Hello and welcome to this video tutorial for the Lansing Homeschool Hackers. If you're here today, hopefully it's to learn about GitHub a little bit and specifically how to make a pull request so that you can have changes introduced to somebody else's code base, somebody else's repository. So first we're going to come out here and look at the Lansing Homeschool GitHub repositories. So this is the GitHub, uh, the main landing page for the Lansing Homeschool hackers. And what we can do is we can look up here. Um, you'll see things down here because we don't have too many yet. Um, but if we go over to the repositories tab here, we will see a list of repositories. So the Lansing homeschool.github.io, this is our main uh, web page through GitHub pages. Um, there's also a little proof of concept for alphabet flashcards, and we've got the repo we're going to look at today, the LHH GitHub intro. And so if we go into here, uh, we'll see that right now the content below, this is from the file readme.md, md being markdown, and this is going to have instructions for doing what we're going to do right now. Just this is more... Uh, we'll say focused on command line and development tools. We're going to do it kind of the easy way right now. So the first thing that you're going to want to do if you want to make a change to a repository is to create a fork. Creating a fork is creating a copy of the repository as of a certain point in time or for a certain branch. What we're going to do is just create a fork of the main branch. So down here it says copy the main branch only. Um, it's also taking the description that was already there. And we can see that it's keeping the same repository name. Now we could choose to name it differently if we wanted, um, but we're not gonna, we're gonna leave it the same, but now it's a different owner. Um, it defaulted to my personal owner, the my personal uh, set of repositories, but there are others that I could use as well if I chose. Um, but I'm just going to go ahead and create that fork. And now what you'll notice is the URL has changed. It is no longer Lansing Homeschool. It is now Brendan Thede slash LHH uh, GitHub intro. But now that we're in here, let's look at the files that we're going to change. So what we're going to do today, our change that we're going to introduce to the upline to that or to the upstream, that main repository that we want, is we're going to add our name to champions.md. So that's this file right here. Right now, all it has is a placeholder, but we're going to go ahead and add ourselves to this list. The first thing we're going to do for that is we're going to create what's called a branch. Right now, there is one branch, which is main. That's the one that we copied. Um, and it'll even show us that that was updated three months ago. So that was the last time this file was, or that this branch had any files changed. Um, but we're going to now create a new branch. We're going to call this adding Brendan Thede to champions. And there are certain uh, valid characters and then certain ones that you can't use. Um, if you keep it to lowercase letters, you know, numbers, dashes, you're going to be safe. If you're trying to throw in a bunch of spaces or special characters, it might tell you that it can't do that. But we're going to go ahead and do that. And we can leave everything else the same. This is just saying the repository that we want to create the branch from is the one that we're in. And we want to create that or that branch. We want to create it off of main. And so that's just saying that commit is the commit that we're building off of. And that's why here, our new branch says it was updated three months ago. Well, how can that be? We just created it. Well, that that uh, commit was made three months ago. So the fact that our latest commit is three months old means that that's what our repository is going to show as the latest commit. And that's that's expected. Um, you'll see it shows up twice here. One says your branches, one says active branches. That's just kind of a, a way when you get a lot of branches, it makes it easier to or organize. But what we're going to do is we're just going to click into this branch. So now we'll see before this had shown main, right? And we can actually switch back. 
Now it's showing adding Brendan to champions. So now we're in this other copy. So we created a fork, right? So that was one way of making a copy. And now we've got a branch, which is essentially another copy. And this is the copy that we're going to change. So we're just going to come in here and in GitHub, there is a built-in editor. And so we're going to go ahead and I'm going to get rid of the uh, placeholder that was there before. I'm going to put in my GitHub username um, for people who add their names after me. They'll just go ahead you know, hit enter. It's automatically adding that asterisk there, which that asterisk is important for markdown because that allows it to interpret that as, oh, that should be a bullet in this list. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to remove the garbage that I just added in. And now I'm going to commit my changes. And so update champions MD, that's an okay message, but we can be a little more explicit here and say that we're adding my username to that. Um, the extended description isn't gonna be needed here because this commit message is short and it says it all. You want it to be pretty short just because of the way that they get listed out. It'll make it easier for you to read, but we're gonna go ahead. We're gonna commit this directly to our branch. There's another option, but we don't wanna do things that way, okay? Because we're gonna do a pull request, not to this repo, but to the original repo that's upstream. So we're gonna go ahead, commit directly, and now we're back. We see now in our files, it's showing the my name in there, in the champions. And what we can do now is we can go back to the main branch, or back to the, the main view, and it shows us, hey, you just made a change to this branch do you want to do something with that? And the default behavior is it wants to create a pull request. And we want to do that. Um, if you did not see this message or if you're doing something else, then you can, for example, come to the pull request tab and from here do new pull request. But it's still, GitHub's pretty smart about knowing you probably wanna make this change. So let's go ahead and do that. And so it's giving us a message. So this is a title for our pull request. So our pull request is where, you know, if we are somebody who doesn't have, you know, direct access to change things within the Lansing Homeschool group, then you need to request to make the change. And so making that change is going, or making that request is going to make it so that an owner is going to see that request, be able to look at it, verify that it's acceptable, and then get that merged in. Um, it's going to look a little bit different for me just because I happen to own you know, both ends of the pipeline here. I own the Lansing Homeschool repo and I own my own private repo. So it's going to look a little bit different, but the, the flow is going to be basically the same. And so we see here, um, for opening the pull request, it's got this little arrow here, right? So this is saying we're merging this into this. So we're merging the GitHub in, intro from Brendan Thede using the branch, adding Brendan Thede to champions. We're gonna try, we're gonna request that be merged into the Lansing Homeschool LHH GitHub intro in the main branch, okay? These are all the defaults that GitHub's picking for us and they are the ones we want. And I'm not going to add a comment or anything. I'm just going to leave the description as it is. And I'm going to say, create pull request. And now this has automatically taken us back. You know, if we look at our URL, if we look at the, the title here, we are now back in the Lansing Homeschool group in, in that copy of LHH GitHub intro. And so this is the pull request. So for me as a maintainer of this repo, I might come in here someday and I would see, oh, uh, up here, I see a pull request, right? And if I look at the champions list now before our pull request is added in, we'll see it still says placeholder. But now I'm gonna go to the pull requests and I'm gonna see, okay, uh, this guy named Brendan Thede, I know him. Uh, he has created a pull request that wants to do something. What is it doing? Well, I can look at his title here that says 
adding Brendan Thede to champions. Okay, that makes sense. I can look at the commits and see, oh, there was only one commit. If there are a bunch of commits, I could look at what each of those were. But probably the most interesting, easy way to look at things is to go to the files changed. And here I see, oh, he wants to change placeholder to Brendan Thede. Uh, in the future, other people would be, oh, they're adding a new line. Now, me being able to come in here and look at this lets me validate that it isn't somebody, you know, instead of adding their own name, they're changing my name to be, you know, Brendan Thede is a butthead. Uh, you know, a little bit of protection there. So this lets the owners be able to let people contribute, but verify that what they're contributing is acceptable, is right. Okay. For here, it doesn't make a whole lot of difference. You know, it's just a text file. It's not a big deal. But for big coding projects, it's more likely that somebody might try to insert, um, let's say, malicious codes. So this is stuff that's going to cause problems for people, you know, and put viruses on people's computers, stuff like that. Those are things we want to make sure that we're protected from. But back to the pull request, and again, this is the this is the way it's going to look like for me as an owner of this repository. So I see, oh, there's no merge conflicts. So that means there wasn't the comp the changes weren't so complicated that it doesn't know how to do it. So it knows how to take that change and put it into the existing stuff. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to say merge that pull request, and I get to create now a new commit that goes into the main branch. And I'm gonna leave it just as, yeah, I'm merging in the pull request from this other repository and branch. And so I'm gonna say, yep, confirm the merge. Now this, this pull request is showing us with a status of merged. Uh, it also could be closed if we got rid of it without making the change, um, but it's no longer an open pull request. And for me, now putting on the other hat of this, I'm the person who made the change. Um, it gives me the option of deleting the branch um, because that branch that I used over in my personal repository, it's not useful anymore. So I can go ahead and I can delete. There we go. And now if I go to the main repo here, if I go into the champions list, now my name is there. And we can see in the history, if we want to see when that happened, we can see things like that. So we can see when the file was originally added and then when the, the most recent change happened. So that is it for today's demonstration. Uh, hopefully that's helpful. Hopefully you're able to use this strategy for making changes. Uh, if you get the opportunity to contribute to uh, the Lansing Homeschool Hackers blog or things like that. Um, but generally, you know, for people who want to get into development, learning how to contribute on GitHub is a really good skill and I hope you make the most of it. And I look forward to seeing you at Lego League or any of the other Lansing Homeschool events in the future. Bye.